Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. So thank you for joining me. So with all the craziness and everything that is happening right now, I've had a lot of people DMing me and emailing me, asking me questions about what foods they can eat that are gonna benefit their health, that are gonna boost their immune system, that are gonna support their immune system and keep them healthy during these crazy times where we don't wanna get sick. We don't wanna get sick with anything right now. You don't wanna be going to the hospital you don't want to be sniffling. I don't have to tell you guys that. So I've compiled a list of my top 10 favorite immune boosting foods that hopefully you'll be able to find in grocery stores around you. I've tried to make these foods as common as possible. So it's nothing like crazy that you're going to have to get from, you know, some rare corner of the uh, jungle or something like that. These are all foods that you should be able to find in your grocery store, provided that there's still some left. So while things like social distancing, washing our hands, getting adequate sleep and hydration are all really important for our health, uh, there are definitely some things that we can do nutritionally in order to support our immune system and our overall health. Hopefully you get some ideas from these. I mean, you're going to know of some of these, but I bet you some of them you're not going to know. And I will definitely give you some tips on how I use them and how they are helping our body as well. So try and make it a bit interesting for you guys. So if I have forgotten any or I left any out that you think I should have included in here, definitely put them in the comment section down below. Share with all of us so that we can all learn. So just a quick message before we start. I just want to you know, send my love and compassion out there to everybody. I know that these are uncertain and unsettling times and I definitely have a lot more questions than I have answers and only time is really going to tell what you know the end result of all this is going to be. But I know in the meantime, we have to stay vigilant. We have to keep ourselves healthy and do what we can to keep our immunity up. So in no particular order, here are my top 10 immune boosting foods. So bell pepper an amazing source of both vitamin C and beta carotene. So vitamin C increases the production of antibodies and white blood cells. These help our immune system to react against substances that the body recognizes as foreign, such as bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens, pathogens, and helps us to fight against those. There's gonna be a lot of words in here that I stumble over, so forgive me guys, stay with me. And beta carotene, which converts to vitamin A in the body, is essential for regenerating our cells and tissues. So beta carotene foods benefit virtually every single tissue from your skin to your immune system to your bones. So very important, super good food, and uh, even higher vitamin C content than most citrus fruits. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think the vitamin C, think orange, way more vitamin C in a pepper. And just one pepper is generally more than your RDI of both vitamin C and vitamin A. But uh, it should be noted that our body uses up vitamin C pretty quickly. So having a bit of pepper throughout the day is probably a little bit better than having a ton at once. But any is better than nothing for sure. It's important to remember though that vitamin C is quickly degraded by heat. So you want to eat them raw for the maximum amount of vitamin C that you're going to get from them. So uh, chop them up, put it on your salads, put it on top of your stir fry. You could even slice it up and have it with hummus. So number two is garlic. Garlic is super powerful at helping to boost our immune system and it's just great for our overall health. So one of the ways that it works is by enhancing the functioning of the immune system by stimulating certain cell types such as macrophages, lymphocytes, and natural killer cells by mechanisms including the modulation of cytokine secretion, immune antibody production, phagocytosis, and macrophage activation, which all help to isolate and kill invading pathogens. Basically, what all that means is that it upregulates your immune function and efficacy during times of need. So cooked, raw, or powdered are all gonna benefit you. So you definitely wanna have some sort of garlic. It is so easy to incorporate in meals. Garlic is one of the staples to my cooking, as any of you guys on this channel know. Garlic powder, onion powder, that is my secret. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Number three is ginger. So I'm sure you guys saw this one coming with its amazing anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and antimicrobial properties. This is amazing at helping to boost our immune system. So there's a ton of information out there on just how and why ginger helps our health so much and boosts our immune system. But you can see just by looking at this chart how many different ways it does it. So like I mentioned, antimicrobial, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, but it's also great for our cardiovascular system. It's even protective against some respiratory disorders. It's good for helping to balance blood sugar. It has anti-cancer activities. So this is one seriously powerful food. I think a lot of people often overlook it just because we hear it so much. Oh yeah, ginger's good for a cold, ginger's good for this. But like, it is good for so many things. I know after reading all this stuff, after I've been researching for this video, I know I'm gonna be consuming ginger a lot more. 
So there's lots of ways you can incorporate ginger into your diet. I mean, you could chop it up really thin and have it with some hot water, have it as like a tea. You could also grate it, put it into like a stir fry or a sauce. Um, <coughs> Not sick, I promise. <laughs> but you can't catch it through the screen at least, whatever it is. And the easiest way to have it, I think at least, is what I did this morning. I just cut a chunk off it and threw it into my smoothie. Tasted great, it was really like nice and fresh in there and uh, it actually made my stomach feel great. That's another good point is it's really good at helping to like relieve gas and bloating and uh, just any sort of upset stomach. So yeah, ginger is a really good one to have on hand. All right, number four is sunflower seeds. So you guys might not have thought of this one, but I think it's a pretty cool one to add to this list and I'll explain to you guys why. So these tasty little seeds right here are high in both zinc and vitamin E. So people that have low zinc status have often been shown to have impaired immune function and also um, impaired wound healing too. So the reason for this is likely because zinc is a key mineral that makes up enzymes and enzymes are in charge of so many of our key metabolic processes and actions, including fighting infection. And vitamin E is a potent antioxidant and it also has the ability to modulate our immune function. So these puppies are easy to have as part of a trail mix, to sprinkle on top of a salad, in oatmeal, or even you could throw them into a stir fry if you wanted. So uh, there's also like sun butter, which is made from sunflower seeds and you can use it in the place of Dare I say peanut butter? No, you can't use it in the place of peanut butter, but you can maybe have it instead of peanut butter. Nothing replaces peanut butter. So number five is sauerkraut. You guys may have heard this before, and maybe you haven't, but most of our immune system actually resides in our gut. So the microbes that make up our gut bacteria actually release antibodies that help to fight off pathogens and viruses and actually stop them from invading our body. So one thing that I do want to point out about sauerkraut is that when you buy it, you want to make sure that you get raw and unpasteurized sauerkraut because if you buy the pasteurized kind, um, basically all those microbes have been cooked off. All the stuff that we want from it is not there anymore. So you want to get traditionally fermented sauerkraut and if you can't find it in stores around you, you can always make it. And, and I keep meaning to do a video on this, so if you guys are interested and you want to see me show you how to make sauerkraut, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I can do that for sure. Um, and I actually make it out of red cabbage, so it's a lot more colorful. It has more antioxidants and everything in there. Uh, and it's actually a pretty kind of cool process how the whole thing happens. I did a little digging around on the internet trying to find out how many CFUs, colony forming units, there were in sauerkraut. And that's kind of the way that they measure how much probiotics are in something. You'll often see it on the front of a probiotic bottle or whatever. Uh, and of course, it's gonna vary depending on the brand and the type that you get and also how long it's been fermented. Uh, but generally, as a rule of thumb, I was kind of able to figure out that two tablespoons contained one million CFUs and a huge variety of probiotics on top of that. But most importantly and interestingly is that they're able to survive the low pH conditions of our stomach and actually get into the intestines where they need to be. Anyways, basically how I like to have it is just to put a spoonful or two on top of my food. Mushrooms, number six. Mushrooms are known to possess anti-tumor, antiviral, and antibacterial properties. These effects of mushrooms are suggested to be due to their ability to modulate immune cell functions. They can increase beneficial cytokines, which are important for cell signaling in our immune system. The polysaccharides they contain, which include beta-glucans, help white blood cells to fight infection. So these ones that I have here are cremini mushrooms, but any mushrooms that you can get are gonna have some or all of those properties. So just get whatever ones that you can, whatever ones you like. And the way that I like to have them usually is to just like slice them up or chop them up and throw them into a stir fry. Uh, I'm sure there's a ton of ways that you can have them. Probably put them in a smoothie if you want, but no thanks, not for me. All right, so number seven is turmeric. So I actually did an amazing food series video on this and it was a really good one. So much information on that. So if you want to learn more about turmeric, there's a lot to learn about it. Definitely check out that video. I'll put a link in the description box down below for it. But uh, you guys probably know a little bit about this already, right? Super powerful anti-inflammatory. It's one of the main spices in curry and it is super orange and it'll stain anything. <laughs> so as I mentioned, traditionally it's well known for its powerful anti-inflammatory effects. Curcumin, which is one of the active components in it, has been shown to be a potent immunomodulatory agent that can modulate the activation of T cells, B cells, macrophages, neutrophils, natural killer cells, and dendritic cells. 
Curcumin can also downregulate the expression of various pro-inflammatory cytokines. So you can either get it as a powder like I have here or as the fresh root as well. And if you guys have seen that amazing food video on turmeric, you'll know why I prefer the fresh root over the powder. Some of the powders have been shown to be um, adulterated with some lead, which is not good. Uh, so just make sure that you get it from like a trustworthy company, a good source. And uh, yeah, make sure you have it with black pepper as well because I've explained it a lot, but black pepper helps with the absorption of that curcumin. So we definitely wanna have those two together. So my favorite way to consume it is just by putting a chunk of it into my smoothie with a few black peppercorns and that's it. Don't have to think about it, hardly even taste it. Uh, but if you want, you could always like grate it up and put it into a stir fry or put it into soups or whatever, or just, you know, make a spice mix using this. And as I mentioned, it is in curry spice as well. So number eight is green tea. So green tea has been shown to have amazing immunomodulating effects. So several types of immune cells are known to be affected in varying degrees by green tea and EGCG, which is one of the active components in green tea. Among them, the dramatic effect on T cell function has been reportedly demonstrating, including T cell activation, proliferation, differentiation, and the production of cytokines. So easiest way to have this is probably as a tea. And there's so many good benefits. Like one that's just coming off the top of my head right now is it's great at helping to um, fight against the bacteria that causes uh, like gingivitis and dental cavities and stuff like that. The, the bacteria that we don't want in our mouth. Uh, so it's definitely antibacterial as well. Uh, lots of reasons to drink green tea. It does contain a bit of caffeine, so don't have it too close to bed if you're gonna have it. So I couldn't make this video without mentioning these. Number nine are berries. Berries are a great source of vitamins and minerals, and especially vitamin C. And they also contain a ton of antioxidants and inflammatory compounds. They help with the stimulation of our immune system because of their high vitamin C content. Their antioxidants, including flavonoids, also help with the immune system by reducing oxidative stress and lowering inflammation. So my favorite way to have berries is to put them into my smoothies or smoothie bowls or even make like berry and banana nice cream. It's another awesome way to have them. Uh, but I also put them into my oatmeal sometimes. However, do keep in mind that the vitamin C content of them is gonna be seriously degraded if we are cooking them. And number 10, I saved the most controversial one for the last one, and that is cilantro. <laughs> So whether you like it or not, cilantro is amazing for our health. And you know what, I should have just said herbs in general, but uh, I wanted to poke some of you guys that didn't like it, so I said cilantro. But you know, uh, things like parsley and basil and stuff will have similar properties to this as well. So if one of those suits you better, then definitely get those. Strong antimicrobial, antibacterial properties when consumed will help us to fight infection. And it's also a really great heavy metal chelator. And we know that heavy metals in the body can downregulate the immune system so there's not something we want which is why it's great to regularly consume some fresh herbs especially cilantro cilantro is also amazing because it contains natural antihistamines and also a good dose of vitamin C so it's a pretty amazing food if you don't like it try and learn to like it but uh, if you don't you just hate it I understand that it's definitely a polarizing one so probably my favorite way to have cilantro is to just put it in my smoothies. It's a nice and easy way to get a bunch of it down. And I think that a smoothie masks the taste really well, but for those of you that hate it, that's not gonna work out at all. So if for those of you that hate it, you're not gonna eat it at all. So don't listen to any of this about cilantro. I also like to chop it up and put it in my salads. I like to put it into my stir fries. And uh, another great way to have it is to chop it up with some onion, some tomato, some lime juice maybe some garlic powder, onion powder, cumin, and make some pico de gallo. It's amazing. All right, so I think that's probably it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely hit the thumbs up, hit the like button if you guys did learn something. If you enjoyed the video, it helped me out a lot. Subscribe if you wanna see more from me, and leave your suggestions in the comments down below. What foods did I miss? I certainly did miss some immune boosting foods, so put your favorite ones down below. And if you have any other video suggestion ideas, during this time when a lot of us are at home, uh, definitely let me know and I'll make some of those as well. So I hope you all are doing well during these uncertain times. There are a lot of questions, not a lot of answers, and it is totally normal to feel a bit unsure about things and a bit uneasy. We're all feeling that way. We're all in this together. So let's just be kind to one another. We will get through this. Much love, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.